This video tells the story of this really lovely, beautiful horse that unfortunately in its history had uh, a bad experience when someone got off of the saddle and it got a big fright. So the horse had developed um, this, it would, it would pull back and run backwards when people got off it and then it eventually also crept into mounting as well. Uh, the behaviour was able to be um, stopped a number of years ago but after this horse has had some time off, um, a long time off, it's come back into work and the behavior's been re-triggered. So this is me working with the horse at a clinic to demonstrate some skills and how to approach a problem and also to be able to give the owner some really good advice about what to do. So what I'm going to run through here is me investigating what the behavior actually is, how it's triggered, and then also talking through why it's happening. So just look at that moment again. So as soon as I put my foot down on that mounting block, I knew this was coming. So I'd kind of got up there and I was, I was trying to see what was what would what would actually trigger it, and um, and it was quite easy to trigger, <laughs> and he'd just fly backwards like this. So what I did at the clinic here was first of all I had to discourage the behaviour. Normally I do this the other way around, and I'll explain that at the end. But I discouraged the behaviour first of all, providing some negative consequences when the horse pulls away. I have to show people these skills. Then I, I am on looking to change the experience for the horse. And then also looking at teaching the horse, what you can teach the horse, and because that's always the best approach. So this is it in full, okay, getting on and off, it's triggered. Now what he'd do is he, he'd go backwards and pull away. So I'm bumping him there, right? I'm giving him some pretty serious bumps to keep him going backwards and not being able to actually pull to the side and pull away. Um, and then just redirecting that energy around, okay, just keeping him moving. Just notice that I went from giving him some really serious bumps to just blowing my energy and just sending him around, okay? Because this is a serious, very dangerous behavior, um, this one here. It's very sad, a very beautiful horse in, in, in so many ways, but just with this really dangerous evasion, you know, where people get, getting off and getting on is really vulnerable time to time, and it was quite serious. So I had to deal with that and I had to show people how you deal with it. Okay, so I did a lot of this. I did a lot of um, just working him, using the benefit of exercise to help and also teaching him some groundwork as we're going and refining it and then just letting him rest by the mounting block and then just examining this about what's the behavior, how it's being triggered. You know, see there? So he pretty quickly stopped the whole running backwards business, but you can still see it in him, you know, still, to still see that little like raised head, etc. So I'm going in there, I'm pushing the buttons just to see, you know, what, what is actually triggering this? You know, what is laying behind it, etc. So just doing allow this, just letting him stand by the mounting block, pushing some buttons, etc. You know, making sure I'm moving the mountain block around, seeing if that's what triggers it, etc. Now just note here, um, just not a lot of brace, like very stiff to come around there. See that? And this is the other thing you do is flip his quarters away. So again, I'm showing people at the clinic how you deal with that, you know. Um, so every time he pulled away, I just, you know, changed direction, represented him. If he pulled away, I just changed direction again. Now, I didn't do this without making sure that I had some good halter response before I actually started. But he swings his quarters away and I just changed direction. So if he moved, I just kept him moving. It's the whole, you know, it's the whole principle to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing hard. And he pretty quickly stopped doing that. But I made sure I had some good holder control to start with. Okay, so I was able to um, get him to stop doing the major behaviors of screaming backwards <laughs> and trying to pull away, plus also moving his quarters away pretty quick. But still there, just watch. See here again, I'm just going through like, just going through all the steps of mounting. See there? There it is. So he'd stop pulling away, stop stringing his quarters away, but it was still there. It had just become this little head raise. Now, it wouldn't take much if you didn't know what you're doing for that just to completely re-trigger and that complete and absolute um, full response to happen again. So what I'd done, I'd put it in its box and it had minimized it, okay, because I discouraged the behavior. But that's not good enough. And that's what this video is all about and what I'm trying to convey to everybody is it's more than this, okay? It's more than stopping the behavior, okay? So I did a lot of uh, this until it got better, uh, you know, just taking him away, letting him move, letting the benefits of exercise kick in. And also give me a chance to actually have a look at how he's physically moving because you've got to remember why is this happening? Why? 
you know, yes, it is something he's learnt from a fear, a really um, scary thing that happened to him. There, he's learnt it. However, what else is contributing to it? Does he feel uncomfortable? Is he sore, etc.? So at this stage, you know, he's carrying his head a little bit lower, just there. That's still like a little bit there. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching for the change in this horse. Okay, the whole time, and just taking my time, chipping away at it, etc. Climbing up, climbing down making sure I do it on the other side. By this stage, I could feel that he was quite solid there, okay? He kind of been, he stuck himself to the spot and I couldn't feel his energy kind of wanting to leave. But let's have a chat about why this is happening. So yes, this horse had a, a, a very, a fear triggered event that allowed him to learn something really awful, okay? So horses learn negative things. It's like they create a file in their mind and that file will live there forever, okay? And it's through very thoughtful, dedicated training for life that you've got to shut that file and wrap some chains around it because it can be re-triggered. Why? Okay, because the files can, can pop back open. They can be re-triggered by similar events. However, time, as in this case, this horse had had a lot of time off and then when he'd been brought back in, this file had popped open. Also, due to poor maintenance of not keeping the file shut can also do it. But in this horse's um, case, it was time. So after I got the mounting block, like it stopped performing the behavior at the mounting block, I then set about improving uh, the other components of it. So I noticed he had a lot of brace through his body when I picked him up um, with the halter. So here am I, I've got to fix that because that, that brace of wanting to protect itself, that's a mindset of having to brace and protect yourself, okay? That's not good, you know? So I'm, I'm working on getting him to follow the feel of the rope, which is going to be the reins very shortly, is better. So that takes away that kind of thought in a horse's head that it has to protect itself. So I improved the response in the halter on the ground. We then put the bridle on and did exactly the same thing. And then I went through the mounting process with the bridle and this is the result, okay? So I was able to get on him. Now, if you didn't know he had a terrible mounting and dismounting problem, you would think that was perfectly normal, okay? So I know there was nothing wrong with that horse. And it's like, yeah, but when I got on, he still set, saw that like head come up a little bit. Um, you can still see a little bit of tail swishing and stuff going on in a minute, see there? Um, so, you know, this horse is not fixed and, and that is the thing that people, it, five, things are not five minute fixes. Five minute fixes means you've got to keep doing five minute fixes. The point of this video is I want to show that this behavior is deeper and there's a lot to it and there's a lot more to consider and there's a number of skills you've got to have to be able to work through it um, to actually help the horse. So here what I'm doing is like how the horse feels about being ridden can have a hell of a lot of impact on how they feel about being mounted and dismounted, etc. So I noticed the whole lot of brace in him when you pick him up with the, the bridle, very protective of his face, etc. So I am now just going to chip away and um, just work on that basic response with the bit. Now you notice here I picked him up on that rein and he actually gave me a pretty good response. So on that right rein, which is this more bracy side. So I'm pausing. Big, big, big problem that people do is they keep, keep flexing and flexing and flexing and flexing and flexing without any break, and the horse doesn't get to perceive a release of pressure. So when the horse makes a change in anything, it doesn't matter what it's doing, but if it makes an improvement, give it a big pause. And as I said, my recommendation is at least 20 seconds. Now here, you also prepare horses for getting off. So this horse is... Um, you know, it was very dangerous to get off as well because you get off him and you fly backwards and fly to the side as well. So I'm just, it's just like putting your foot in the stirrup. I'm just um, motioning my body forward is what happens when you go to get off them. Then I put the, the feeling of the reins, etc., into motion. Now I want you to note this horse's tail. So when I pick up that rein, see that, that tail swish? So this horse, you go, oh, look how calm and relaxed he is. No, this horse has like, this horse has a, a, has a feeling and he's got a, there's a negative thought that's running through that when you pick up the reins. And this is a lot of horses do this. Is it, you know, that thought of like, I've got to protect myself. And you can see that coming through like when you pick him up. Or it can be like, that's difficult and hard because, you know, the root of that thought is actually, um, it's uncomfortable. It's a little bit bracy and stiff, etc. Just stiff, etc. So... Um, that's what I'm looking at here and, and as I went on he started you know you can see as he got following the the feel that I was putting down that rein onto that bit 
as he got better and better at it, the, the tail swishing um, got less, okay? Because he was following it better. So here you're going to see I'm about to get off him. So I'm going to go through the mounting, the, the dismount, getting him ready. Is he ready? Is he ready? Now, as I said, this horse, when he got off him, would fly backwards and off to the side. So let's see how he goes. Okay, so I've prepared him for it, got him really solid, got him feeling a bit better about the, the bit, etc. And he jumps off. And if you didn't know anything, then you'd think that was just normal. Okay. Uh, but that's actually a really good thing that horse, as I said, would just fly backwards. So about this particular case, yes, I was able to stop those behaviours. <laughs> but they're still there. That's the thing. I just stopped the big presentation of them. But the thoughts and the feelings are still there because that takes a lot more work. That's why things are not a five-minute fix. It's not just about discouraging the behaviour. That's all I really did and dig into why it was happening. So this is the second time I got him. See how he's still braced when I went to pick him up there? That's his mindset changing at the whole mounting thing. He still doesn't necessarily feel cool about it. And I get on and he stands there and I can feel he's not gonna go anywhere, but you can see by his head, he's still not feeling cool about it. So we gotta do something about that. It's not a five minute fix. It means that you've gotta learn how to fix it, not a trainer. So here was my advice for his really lovely owner who's really dedicated to him. So I recommended a, a reboot or a rebuild of his foundation. Why? For a number of reasons. First of all, improve his fitness and balance. You know, horses need to be able to walk, trot and canter and be quite confident without anyone on their back and then with someone on their back to make sure being ridden is comfortable for them. Also, going through a rebuild process makes you identify whether there's any soundness issues or any potential discomfort that is hampering the horse feeling comfortable when it's been ridden. The next thing it does, and the most important thing it does, is it improves clarity, motivation, and confidence with being ridden and understanding what they've got to do. And that makes the whole process much more comfortable for them. They don't feel threatened. They don't feel like they have to brace and protect themselves. So what it does, it changes their mindset. So these um, evasions and stuff that he had, um, partly triggered by fear. If the horse is already feeling threatened and uncomfortable or whatever, it's very easy to trigger fear. It's just one step away. So it's making the horse feel better uh, about the whole thing, changes the whole context. So again, it's wrapping change around that file. That file of what he learned in that moment will stay with him forever and can be re-triggered either by time, like at what happened in this case, um, but also from another event occurring or just by someone not being aware of, um, of this particular problem. You can reopen it um, up again. So just say, if you got on him and you let him move or take that step away, you'll, you'll re-trigger that circuit. That's, <laughs> you re-oil re that circuit that's in his head to maybe get fired off. So, um, you know, you've got to maintain, you've got to understand it's there, and then you've got to do a lot to make sure the horse feels good about being ridden, you're not triggering any discomfort, you're keeping emotions, not going down the fearful, I've got to protect myself side. All the things you can do um, to stop the horse from feeling uncomfortable, making sure that you take any need to protect themselves, engage them in understanding what they've got to do and following you, etc., can set you up um, to have those files safely locked away and for you to be able to enjoy your horse and that these really negative, dangerous, unsafe kind of behaviors this horse has really unfortunately learned get locked up, okay? So what you saw me in that clinic was I had to do this in reverse. I had to discourage the behavior, then kind of look at changing the feelings, then start teaching. But it's way better when you rebuild or rebuild a foundation on a horse is that you teach them what to do up front. <laughs> By teaching them what to do, you do remove any discomforts or feeling of protect and you have a good chance that you don't even have to go through discouraging the behavior because it's not there. So that's ideal. Okay, hope that was interesting.